Hey, Adam, Jeez, why, why do you think they called bumper scary? <laughs> I don't know. Because <laughs> they come at the beginning, at the end, like bumpers. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Alex, you're a marketing guy. Do you like that design behind Paul? Does that, that sweet logo thing look pretty cool <laughs> to you? <laughs> hey, I forgot to hit the record button. <laughs> yeah, um, that's, that's really professional, isn't it? it? Well, this is a professional podcast. <laughs> I met her in a parking lot and was handed two little Yorkies. And the only person I knew that knew Yorkies was Paul. So I called Paul and said, Paul. <laughs> Sweet Talk is a weekly 20-minute podcast brought to you by the Continuing Education and Workforce Training Division of Idaho State University's College of Technology. Find us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and SoundCloud, and subscribe today. Now, it's time to get started with Sweet Talk. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Sweet Talk, our weekly podcast here at Idaho State University's Continuing Education and Workforce Training. I am Paul Dickey, your co-host here at Sweet. And along with me, as always, is Raylan Price, our interim director. Raylan, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thanks for asking. Happy to be on Sweet Talk today. Excellent. Excellent. And, and as Angie, um, Angie's here as well. How are you doing, Angie? I'm doing really well. For all of our listeners out here who may be listening to this uh, later on down the road after it's posted, we are recording this particular episode the week before Thanksgiving, and that turns us to our guest. Our guest is Kia Shaw. She is the Idaho Food Bank's Eastern Idaho Branch Manager. Uh, Kia, can you take a moment to Tell us a little bit about yourself and your position with the Idaho Food Bank. Absolutely. First off, thank you for having me. I'm really excited to be here. Um, and second off, go Bengals. We have the game coming up oh, on Saturday. Bengals. And so, you know, we got to gotta win there. Um, so like Angie said, I am the branch manager for the Eastern section of the Idaho Food Bank. Um, I've actually been with the Food Bank for over seven years. Um, and I stay because nonprofit work is addicting. <laughs> <laughs> it's really fun. It's the best organized chaos you ever get to be a part of. And I love it. Excellent. Excellent. So organized chaos. Um, so we're leading into uh, one of the big holidays right now. So what is it like um, in your organization as you lead up towards a holiday? It's crazy. Uh, it's really busy. So, you know, food insecurity is a year round issue that families and individuals in Idaho have to deal with about over eight and a quarter percent of the population actually have to deal with this day in and day out. And so during winter months specifically, that need actually increases because not only do you know your price, your costs increase because you're paying more for fuel, you're paying more for gas or for um, heat, but you also have these wonderful holidays that you want to be able to partake in. And so we really strive to help meet that need in November and December for our neighbors in need in Idaho, um, specifically in Southeast Idaho, actually this Saturday during the ISU game, which we're a little bummed about that we're going to miss. Um, we have a Thanksgiving distribution that we're going to do, and we anticipate serving 1,200 families in just, just in Bannon County. Wow. That's amazing. Wow. Do you still have needs for that um, drive? We do. We're looking at getting more turkeys. Um, we're getting really close and we have a few more days to go to get them. Um, Barry Ski and Sports and several other businesses here in Pocatello are fantastic to work with when it comes to that specific food drive. Um, this is, I believe, year 10 that they've done it and they have come through every single year for us. So do you have another drive as you head towards th uh, Christmas as well? We will, we'll have several, um, a lot of companies will do specific drives for that. I know um, in the Pocatello Chubbuck area, we will most likely be doing one with Cole Chevrolet and KPVI in early December. Um, you know, we do currently have uh, Tackle Hunger with the ISU and U of I food fight going on right now, um, working together to kind of tackle hunger all across Idaho, which I love seeing and working collaboratively together. Um, but yeah, there will be several other smaller food drives going on and we need all the help we can. So right. I have a question, Kia, <clears throat> for someone who may want to donate to the food bank, what are some good ways for them to do that? I know sometimes you can, money goes much further than certain foods. Are there certain food items or monetary donations that you seem to be more in need of than others? 
and then other items that people seem to bring you that you don't need as much of. You know, we always, we always will take donations. Um, just because I have a surplus of something now doesn't mean I'm going to have that same surplus in six weeks. Um, that's kind of the way food works. Um, so we are always, we will gladly take, um, almost anything folks want to give. And we really don't take home canned items. We don't take food storage items. Um, and if it's been opened and like tested, please just, you know, toss it. Um, but what we always need, you know, are easy meals, um, vegetables that are canned and low sodium, because we really want to make sure that we're not only giving people food, but we're giving them nutritious food and not causing more health risks later on in life. Um, so on that same hand, you know, fruits that are canned in their own juices and not in syrups, mm -hmm. um, canned proteins, pastas, rices, all those things, um, we will gladly take. We do also accept perishable items, um, with, with a little bit more stipulations to it, you know, frozen stuff has to be frozen. Meat needs to be retail ready. It can't be for a private sale. Um, you know, things like that, because it's not, again, not just about giving people food, but we want to make sure that we're giving nutritious and safe food as well. Okay. And also. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was uh, going to say, if, you know, donating monetarily um, does go a little bit farther. For every $5 that the Idaho Food Bank receives, we can provide enough food for up to 15 meals. Wow. Um, so it's kind of one of those hand in hand things because the food helps right in this moment, but the money will go farther later. So, so do you need donations of non food items as well? Uh, soap, toothpaste, and those type of products? We do accept them. Um, we have uh, several partner agencies across our 16 counties um, that will do a hygiene pantry as well. Um, and so we know exactly what homes we can give those to. So that way they are going into the hands of families who need them. That's incredible. So do you, are there times of years, the, the year that you have needs over and above other times of the year? I mean, I would guess, imagine around the holidays, um, but I also think probably people are giving more during the holidays. I don't know. You're, you're very right. And that's the last statement. Um, November and December brings in a lot, which we're very grateful for because this actually brings in a good majority of our monetary, monetary donations throughout the entire year. Mm -hmm. um, however, families who are food insecure in November and December are still food insecure in June. And usually those summer months tend to be a little bit more scarce um, on things coming in, people wanting to get involved because folks want to take vacation, which I all, by all means, people need a break. We all do. <laughs> you got to take care of your own mental health first. Um, but really in those summer months, that's when we start to kind of see a little bit more of a decline before we get into the fall and we ramp everything back up again. Okay. I have another question too. Are there items that are donated that you're just simply not able to keep or that you tend to have to dispose of because you can't distribute them? Yep. There are, unfortunately, um, everything that leaves our warehouse needs to be, needs to have an ingredient label first and foremost. So folks need to know exactly what's in that package. Um, it needs to have its official known name. So it can't be, you know, grandma's hot fudge, you know, it needs to be a very specific thing. Um, and then it also needs to not be opened. It has, it couldn't be consumed. Um, kind of a little funny story on that. Whenever we go through our food drive items with our volunteers, we have to tell them to open every single jar of peanut butter to make sure it is still sealed because inevitably we have at least one that has had a spoon swipe out of it. Oh my goodness. <laughs> it, it cracks us up. They don't believe us. And then they find it and they all laugh about it. And it's, we get it. I, I'm not a wasteful person by any means myself, but unfortunately somebody doesn't want your, your you know, we can't give somebody your spoon swiped right. peanut butter. Yeah. Um, and then again, like home canned items, we cannot give those out because we have to make sure that we are giving folks safe foods. Um, and we do work in the, we do play in the realm of expired food. And the, a lot of that has to do with, because expiration dates on food have to do with the quality of the food, not the safety of the food when it comes to shelf stable products. Um, and so we do have a range that we work with depending on the kind of food it is. So that way folks, it is still consumable. We're not wasting food that is perfectly safe to eat for folks. Okay. Sounds yeah. good. Now you mentioned like home storage items. What would those kind of items be? Um, you know, like when we're talking about prep items, so number 10 cans of like dry beans or rice or those big five gallon buckets, we cannot use those um, generally because one, we can't, we can't use them in that quantity and two, the dates on them are usually too far out. Got it. Okay. So Akia, uh, do you also um, look for volunteers 
uh, in your organization to help out? Always, always, always. Um, we have an amazing volunteer coordinator, specifically here in Pocatello, and I cannot gush on her enough because she does a fantastic job working with a very diverse group of people and getting the job done um, to the point that we actually book about a month and a half to two months out on oh, average wow. for our volunteer wow. groups wow. because folks want to come in and they want to be around her and they want to work with her and our my, my staff here. Um, however, we do have opportunities um, throughout the entire year for volunteering. And the best way to do that would be if you want to just do an individual, you can go to idahofoodbank.volunteerhub.com. Click on the Pocatello calendar, create an account, and you can sign up when we have open shifts. Um, or you can call our warehouse at 208-233-8811. And Shayla can get you scheduled for a group if you wanted to bring in a group of six or more. What kind so of needs do you have for volunteers? Like what kind of projects do we do? Mm -hmm. Yeah, like what a do you lot of volunteers things. to do, I guess? <laughs> yeah, uh, we do a variety of things. Anything from bagging bulk produce, bagging bulk oats and pasta, to packing food boxes, sorting food drive, which is usually a favorite for folks because you get to see all the fun, interesting things that get donated to a food bank, um, including like canned bacon and canned organ air and a can of Pocatello City water, <laughs> all sorts of fun things. Um, or we build backpacks for our backpack program for our kiddos. And so that one's always a really fun one to do. Can you talk about that backpack program for a moment? Absolutely. So that program is designed for little kiddos um, to take food home over the weekend. We generally work with schools who have a 45% or higher um, free and reduced lunch rate for them. And what we do is we work with those counselors, teachers, whoever's running the program in the school, they identify the students, get permission from the parents. And on Thursday or Friday, just depending on the last day of the school for the kiddo, a bag of food is very discreetly put in their backpack, usually when they're at recess or just, you know, there's aren't kiddos around. Um, in that bag of food has two breakfasts, two lunches, two dinners, and a handful of snacks. Um, so that way they have some food to eat over the weekend, because I don't know about you guys, but I remember trying to learn math and I don't want to try to learn it when my stomach is grumbling also. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so that program is really cool. It's really near and dear to a lot of people's hearts um, because kiddos shouldn't have to worry about where their food's coming from. And because we want to make sure that they are one nutritious, two consistent, we purchase everything that goes in those bags. Um, so that way, everything in that bag is again, nutritious. It's easy to open it. So you don't have to use a can opener. You do not have to use a stove top to heat it up or to cook it at all. So that way when we have little ones who are home alone, they don't have to worry about fire site, fire hazards. And fun fact, everything in that pack weighs less than seven pounds altogether. So that way wow. when we're putting it in a first grader's backpack, we're not hurting the child's back with adding nice. more and more and more weight. Mm -hmm. nice. So what would be an example of a weekend backpack? You know, what kind of food items would be in there? So I believe this year's menu, we change it just a smidgen every year. Um, there's usually a cereal, an oatmeal, um, a plain milk and a chocolate milk, which is like the little 27 ounce ones, um, or sorry, eight ounce ones. Uh -huh. um, and then there's different meals. Um, sometimes we have like mac and cheese, or we have spaghetti and meatballs, ravioli, um, Generally, there is a fruit cup in there. Um, I believe this year is peaches. And sometimes we have um, green bean cups. So that way we can have some vegetables in there as well. Um, I also know there are go-go squeeze packets in those bags this year. So applesauce pouches. And there are cliff bars that were, both of those were actually manufactured and donated to the food bank for this program to help keep oh. the cost of those bags down. Nice. nice. That, that's... <clears throat> I do have a question in kind of regards to this. We all know inflation's kind of going through the roof. People's expenses are kind of going through the roof. Have you seen an increase in the number of people needing the services the Idaho Food Bank provides? Unfortunately, yes. Mm -hmm. um, specifically to here in Pocatello and Chubbuck, um, I have partners who are seeing about five to maybe 10 new families every week or every other week on average. Um, now the average is about 14 to 24 new families every single week. Um, we have a lot of families who have never been in this situation before where their money is no longer going as far as it should between 
you know, retail inflation between the housing market going through the roof, gas doing whatever it's going to do any given that day of the week. It's it's getting crazy for folks. And, you know, it's putting a lot of pressure on our partner agencies and we support them as best as we can. Um, but it's it's getting up there. Wow. So, so oh, go ahead, Paul, and then I'll. So I'll... if someone wanted to utilize your services, how do they what was the, what's the steps in doing that? It is very easy. No matter what county you live in in Idaho, you can go on to idahofoodbank.org slash get food. That will bring you to our food assistance locator. You can put in your city or your zip code, and it will bring up a list of distribution sites, either food pantries, mobile pantries, feeding sites, emergency shelters, whatever, whoever's partnered with us um, that is a public facing entity. It will bring up where they're at, when they do their distribution, a phone number to contact them. One of the fun things about the Idaho Food Bank is we really push to not require identification when our folks, when our neighbors are visiting our pantries. Um, it does create a barrier for some folks, and we want to take those barriers down as best as we can. Um, some of my partners will ask for identification just so they can make sure that George is George today and tomorrow. Um, but we really try to make it as easy as possible. They don't need to bring income verification. They don't need to bring resident verification. They really just need to show up and say, you know what, I really need some help today. What do we, what can we do? So, um, could they potentially go to multiple sites then? Mm -hmm. I mean, oh, they could. Yep. Okay. They potentially can, um, one of the great things about the pantries is they try to give individuals anywhere between 50 and 80 plus pounds of food when they visit. So we're looking at a three to five day um, span of food because we really want to just help fill a gap. We can't be the end all be all for everybody every single day of the week. But my biggest suggestion for folks, if you if you utilize food stamps, which I highly suggest you do, if you qualify, please, please utilize them. Um, is go to the partner agency at the beginning of the month and get what you're going to get from them and then use your food stamps to fill in the gap because mm -hmm. that'll actually help stretch your food stamps throughout the entire month instead of having a very short window of using them in a 10-day period and then having 20 plus days to have to figure out what else we're going to do. Now, so, can you go ahead, Paul? No, so um, Akia, I'm sure that you've run into many people in the community uh, who you know, pride keeps them from using your services. So when you have some, when you meet someone like that, what are the, some of the things you say to, you know, let them know it's okay to use your services? You know, the biggest thing is having a friend bring you along. Um, on that, I'm going to answer that in a little bit of a roundabout way. We have a school pantry um, in a little more rural community that's a little more tight knit. Um, and we, we'd move the school pantry around this community several times, just trying to find the best spot to put it. So that way it will be utilized to its fullest potential. Um, we had somebody step up and say, you know what, put it here, I'll tackle it and we'll handle it. And they did. Um, they actually challenged the senior class to be in charge of the pantry. Okay. And those students helped break down those barriers with their peers and letting them know, like, look, people need help sometimes. You might just need a bag of pasta. That's fine. That's why this is here. Come on, let's go get you some pasta. Um, and so they did a really fantastic job breaking down those barriers and letting folks know that it's okay to ask for help. It doesn't make you a weaker person because in life, we all need help some way, somewhere for somebody to help lift us up and to carry us along. And that's what our partner agencies want to do. They really want to stand in that gap. And so Almost any partner agency you go to, I can name off every single one of them here in Pocatello and Chubbuck because I know you're going to walk in and you're just going to get loved on. You're not going to get judged. You're not going to get scoffed at. People aren't going to care what car you're driving. You're going to walk in that building because you need help and they're going to be there to help you. That's now, can you talk, uh, sorry, Raylan, <laughs> can you, <clears throat> for people who maybe can't get down to the Idaho Food Bank, can you talk a little bit about some of your partner agencies in the area? where someone it might be closer to someone else's home that they might be able to walk to or take a bus to or et cetera. Absolutely. That's one of the things about being here. Um, our partner agencies are actually spread across Poke Hill and Chubbuck and they run Tuesday through Thursday, or excuse me, Tuesday through Friday at various times of the day. So no matter if you have to work in the morning, we have ones that are open in the evening. If you have to work in the evening, we have ones that are open in the morning. Um, so we kind of have this really good balance in my opinion. Um, but 
they are spread out from the south of town all the way out into Chubbuck, and there are many options. Um, I actually have a partner out in Chubbuck that is partnering with United Way to pilot doing deliveries through DoorDash. Um, mm. I don't know if they're taking on any more, so we'd have to get them involved with that. Um, but for folks who are homebound and can't get a ride, can't get out, that is a great option to do because we know that problem. We know that barrier exists for a lot of folks. Um, you know, the bus system does the best it can, but it doesn't always isn't always convenient for folks when they need to get somewhere at a very specific time. Uber is expensive. Taxis are expensive, um, which is why we really work with closely with United Way when they're doing pilot projects like that. So we can we'll make sure that the neighbors that we're trying to serve get the access they need. I love that you call them neighbors because that's yes. who they are. They yes. are yeah. our friends and our neighbors um, who need a little extra help. And I appreciate that. So back to the, like, if you're getting canned foods in, um, what are the parameters for donating? Like if somebody's got some in their pantry and they're like, you know, I really need to rotate this through, or, you know, I've got too many and I'd like to get rid of some, what, what are you looking for on your end? So from a food safety standpoint, we're really looking for making sure the dan the cans aren't bulging and severely dented. If it has a little love ding, that's one thing, but we want to make sure it's not overly creased. Um, if you remember Mr. or Big Daddy, you know, Microsoft's mm -hmm. down two points. We don't want to do that. <laughs> but, um, you know, if it's a little love deep, that dented, we're okay. Um, we want to make sure it has its label and its original label on it. So that way we have that ingredient label. Um, and that's mostly for allergens. And we want to make sure that if an item gets recalled, we can pull it properly. Mm -hmm. um, and then when it comes to expiration dates, usually within, we're within a three-year period. So if it's no more than three years old, we will still accept it and hand it out. Um, after that, we will have to destroy it. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's good to know. That's good. So, to Kia, what is the most rewarding part of your job? Any day I can get out of my office and be around our neighbors. Um, <laughs> Honestly, like, so prior to becoming the branch manager, I ran the warehouse. So I was over inventory control and the agency orders, and I saw concrete walls, steel pillars, pallets, boxes, <laughs> cans, and that was pretty much it. Um, so our Thanksgiving distribution actually ended up being my favorite day because it got me to use a different part of my brain to do the logistics of setting it all up. And then it also got me to be around all of the people that we serve and kind of see the end participant and the end impact that we have on somebody's life. Now that I can get out of my office a little more freely, um, most days, um, Thanksgiving is actually still my favorite day because I still get to do all those things. And I get to watch not only how many people we get to bless, but I get to watch the 125 plus volunteers that we have doing this have so much joy and love on their face while they serve our neighbors and get to bless so many families and so many individuals. It is amazing to watch and it's incredibly humbling to see how giving and how supportive our community is. And that's why they're my favorite days. That's so, amazing. So if you guys heard our timer went off, that 20 <laughs> minutes went by so quickly. If uh, I know you've given some information for people uh, just previous in this podcast, but Kia, could you take a moment just to <clears throat> reiterate uh, some of that information for someone who's looking to volunteer or donate? Absolutely. Um, so the best thing to do if you're looking to volunteer is one of two things. Call our warehouse at 208-233-8811 and ask for Shayla. Let her know you want to do some volunteer services and she can get you all squared away. Or if you just know you want to come in with you and maybe one other person, you can go to idahofoodbank.volunteerhubhub.com and you can click on the Pocatello calendar, find a time that works for you, create an account and sign up, and then just come have fun with a bunch of people who really love being here. That's great. Are there certain times of the day, like, and do you have to commit to a certain number of hours when you, you don't have to commit to a certain number of hours? We do them usually, um, our public shifts are in two hour increments. Um, however, if you need to leave after an hour and a half, we're not going to, you know, berate you with anything. We're not going to shame you for it. We may <laughs> poke a little bit, but you know, it's all in good fun. Um, but usually we have two hour, um, from 10 to noon, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Um, and then sometimes we have some evening shifts depending on the time of month it is. And for people wanting to donate food or money, how would they go about uh, those donations? 
again, a couple different options. You can always come down to our warehouse at 555 South First Avenue. Um, if you want to do a cash or check donation, that's a great way to do it. Well, my staff loves being able to see folks and say thank you. Um, or if you want to do a card donation, you can go to idahofoodbank.org. In the top right corner, there's a big donate now button. Um, you can set that up. You can make it a monthly recurring donation if that's what you choose to do. And you can also designate those funds for a specific program. So if you really wanted to go to the backpack program or the school pantry program, or you know, to purchase, you really want that to go to purchase food, um, you can do that. You can also designate it to stay in Southeast Idaho. So it's gonna help our neighbors right here in Southeast Idaho. You just have to put it in the comments and they'll get it taken care of. Oh, that's thank good you. to know. Excellent, excellent. Good well, information. Yeah, thank, you, <laughs> yeah, thank you, and thank you so much for being with us today. I learned a lot about your services uh, that um, the food pantry provides um, and uh, it's such an important, uh, you're an important neighbor. That's right. Important neighbor. Thank you for um, having me, you guys. Yes. And uh, hey, Angie, thank you so much for all, all the stuff you do to put this uh, behind the scenes stuff together for the podcast. Raylan, always thank you so much for joining us. Um, I, I appreciate the valuable leadership you provide. And if people want to check out our offerings at uh, Continuing Education Workforce Training, you can visit our website at cetrain.isu.edu or email us at cetrain at isu.edu or give us a call at 208 208- 282-3372. Um, also, if you like this podcast, please like, share, subscribe. It helps us bring our message to the larger community, and we do appreciate that. And be safe out there.